Hello everyone. Up to this point I've been hand digging the furrows in our garden. But I was reminded that when I got this Troy built tiller, it came with a hiller furrower attachment. So it makes sense, I think, to put it together and give it a try. When I picked up this Troy built tiller off Craigslist, one of several options it came with was this brand new in the box Troy built tiller furrower. It's uh I mean, it's very old, but it's, the box has never been opened. The staples are still in place. So I'd like to give it a try, see how it does in the garden. And since it's brand new in the box, I thought I'd do a little bit of an unboxing video and install it on the tiller and, and try it out. this instructions useful these are called hiller wings Nuts and bolts. That's a heavy piece right there. That's the blade mounting bracket. And this is the Hiller furrower attachment. More nuts and bolts. And that's everything in the box. Step one. Attach the furrower blade to the mounting bracket. The photo quality in the instructions leaves a lot to be desired. So much so that I installed the furrower blade to the mounting bracket in the wrong orientation. So I'll have to correct it. Step two is mount the furrower on your tiller. There's this pin, they call this a clinch pin, it goes through the hole in here and the holes are right where they need to be. And that's that. You can see that pin. Step three uh, doesn't work if you don't install this correctly on step one. I installed it backwards.
Here's a flat washer and a little star washer. And then just a thumb screw, a wing nut. There's a short carriage bolt that has a square neck here. Goes into square holes in the fur over. And a flat washer, star washer, and a thumb screw. Adding the second hiller wing. Flat washer, star washer, and wing nut. I'm setting it to the extreme angle on both sides because I want to have some deep furrows and high high hills and we'll see how this works. I might need to adjust it in the field. So there it is. It's all installed. Now I can tip this thing back down. See what it looks like. That vibration sound is caused by the rear hinged foot guard contacting the hiller wings. It's a little annoying, but it doesn't affect anything.
it definitely makes a nice furrow. I'd kind of like to be able to make it even steeper on the sides. I don't think there's any more adjustment to make the sides steeper. But that looks good. I'm going to have to clean up the ends. I made the mistake of running this furrow with high speed selected. It's definitely better in low speed. But luckily, this didn't turn out so bad anyway. It makes much wider furrows than I do by hand. So we might not get as many rows out of our garden. Other than that, it does a great job. I know I need to run my speed, my engine speed a little lower than I have been. That's one thing. I especially need to run it in low gear. But it does a good job. And that's a lot less digging. Well, with a little more practice, this Troy built Hiller, Hiller furrower is going to save me a lot of work. Also, next year, I'm running my furrows the other direction. Instead of front to back, I'm going to go lengthways because that's a difference of 20 feet versus 30 feet. Then I'll have fewer furrows to run. So that results in fewer furrows to shovel clean on the ends and fewer turnarounds with the tiller. Okay, I'm pleased with the results. You can see we've been very busy getting the garden going. After I was done tilling, I installed all the fencing and trellises. At this point, we have 75% of our planting done. We're using hay for mulch this year. We're planning to bury it in the furrows come fall. I got 10 hilled rows to plant in. At 20 feet long, that's a total of 200 feet of planting space. Thank you for watching. Please take a moment to like and subscribe.